Makehaven screen printing tutorial. This is the screen printing supply area. It houses almost all the supplies you will need. Part 1 Preparing the Screen Retrieve the photo emulsion from the non food refrigerator located in the casting and plastics area. Get a scoop coater from the screen print supply area. Fill the scoop coater about one quarter full of emulsion. Tilt the screen upright on its end. Angle the scoop coater so that the emulsion starts flowing towards the screen. Once the emulsion touches the screen, gently lift up on the scoop coater. Apply an even coat to the frame. Return to the bottom and scrape the extra emulsion back into the scoop coater. The thinner a coat, the better your process will work. Store your screen in the black Tupperware bin in the corner of the supply area. Be sure the wet surface does not touch anything. If you plan on leaving it for an extended period of time, you can wrap it in a black plastic trash bag once it's dry. Pour the excess emulsion back into the container. A putty knife or scraper can be handy. Wash out the scoop coater thoroughly. You can use the hose to speed up the process. Be careful, it can spray you. Make sure you wipe the edges of the scoop coater especially well. Return to the screen printing area. Return the emulsion to the non-food fridge so it will live a long time. Part 2. Preparing the Stencil Your image should be solid black positive space and solid white negative space. No gradients or varying values. You can also draw your image on acetate that has a toothed surface to hold the ink. The best way to get your image to the printer is to use the file bucket. Go to bucket.makehaven.org and drop it in. Warning, file bucket is not secure, so don't send secret documents. Go to the printer station and open the file bucket. You'll see your not a secret file. Open it in the program of your choice. Do a test print to make sure you are happy with the size. You can resize it in Inkscape by going to File and Document Properties and changing the document size. Load a transparency into the multi-purpose tray of the printer. The transparencies are in a silver sleeve and are usually found in the sewing and crafts area in a drawer labeled transparencies. Load the sheet into the multi-purpose tray at the base of the printer. Make sure it spools part way up. Follow the steps on the screen to print a transparency. Make sure you print to the multi-purpose tray. 
also under the quality tab change the tone or density of the black so that you get the highest tone or density you'll want to print two transparencies on separate sheets. Prepare the transparencies by using the little paper cutter on Laser Cutter Island. Cut off any excess material on your transparencies. Line up the two transparencies and then tape them together using transparent tape. Part 3, preparing the exposure. You'll need the 30 watt UV light from the plastics and casting area, as well as two plastic bins from the 3D printer storage. Clamp the light to a table using a quick clamp. Use a power strip as the UV light does not have an on-off switch. Plug in the light and test it out. Before exposing your screen, you want to check to see where you'll place your film. Line everything up on the t-shirt press platen before placing your film on the screen for exposure. Here, I'm testing to see where the image will line up on the shirt. For exposing, position the screen on top of the boxes underneath the light. Place your films backwards on top of the emulsion area where they need to be. If you are worried about your films not being flush against the surface, you can place a piece of clear sheet glass on top of the films. The glass can be found in a bin in the silkscreen storage area. Be careful, the edges are sharp. Turn on the UV light and time it for 1 minute and 30 seconds. At 1 minute and 30 seconds, turn the light off and immediately bring the screen to the sink. Place the screen backwards in the sink and hose it on spray mode with cold water. Once the back is wet, turn the screen around and spray continuously 
until the stencil starts to erode or fall away. You should check it continually to see whether the stencil is eroding. Any area that is still light green needs more spray. You can get pretty close up with the water. The water hitting the screen is loud. If the stencil is being stubborn, you can agitate it slightly with your fingernail. If you are not having any luck, try turning the screen around and spraying from the back. If you are still not having any luck, try turning on the hot water and spraying with hot water. Sometimes, if the screen gets overexposed, the stencil will be stubborn and not erode. If the dark green part of the stencil starts to bubble or erode, you should stop immediately as you have now oversprayed and are out of luck. If all goes well, all the light green part of your stencil will have eroded and you will have completed the spray out process. Place your wet screen in front of the black fan in the wood drying area and turn on the fan. Once your screen is dry, you'll need to tape off the edge between the stencil and the frame where unwanted ink will pass through. Look for any pinholes in your stencil and tape those off as well as a stencil you made that you're not using if you made more than one on your screen. Part 4. Art. You should now dress the platen with the shirt you plan to print. Be sure the shirt goes around the black frame piece that's underneath the platen. Once your shirt is on the platen, position your screen in the clamps and get it registered where you want it.
if you're using Plastisol ink, you'll need the flash dryer. Plug it into the left electrical box only, or else you could short something else out. Turn on the flash dryer. Set up a drying station using two stools and a piece of masonite. The masonite is to keep the stools from getting super hot. The flash dryer gets hot. You'll need the laser temperature gauge, which is located in the measurement tools drawer by the bike area. There are two temperature gauges. Either one will do. Make sure that you set the gauge to Fahrenheit. Warning. If you are planning on printing light colored Plastisol ink on a blended material, you risk a t shirt disease known as dye migration. Click the link on this page to read more about dye migration disease. Spoon the ink you plan to use into the frame on the far side of the stencil. Make sure you have enough ink to cover the whole design. Choose a squeegee that is just wide enough to cover the stencil area, but not too wide. With both hands, Use the stencil to pull the ink towards you at a 45 degree angle. Then push the ink away from you at the same angle. Last pull towards you one more time. Three passes is usually enough. Lift the screen and check if you have enough coverage. If not, replace the screen and do one more pass and check again. Do not overprint. Undress the platen and lay the shirt on the masonite. Make sure the shirt does not wrinkle. Then, using the black handle, roll the flash dryer so that it is positioned above the shirt. For cotton, you want to heat the ink up to 320 degrees for 10 to 12 seconds. If the shirt starts to smoke, roll the flash dryer away immediately. Light colored fabrics can char if left too long under the dryer. If you have positioned the dryer, about 12 inches above the stools, then you should not get any smoking or charring. Blended fabrics will heat up much faster and you must be very careful of melting the synthetics in the blend. Any sign of smoke is the sign for you to remove the dryer. It should be cool enough to touch after a few seconds. If the ink has turned rubbery and dry, then you've cured the ink. 
make sure you turn off the dryer and unplug it once you've finished curing your inks. Part 5. Clean up. Remove all excess ink from the screen and tools and place it back into the container. Using the Plastisol ink means you need to use the Franmar solvent to clean up. Spray some of the Franmar solvent from above the sink onto the screen. It is non-toxic and you don't need gloves. Wipe the screen with the paper towel and you'll start to see the Plastisol ink break down. Once you have thoroughly wiped out the stencil with the Franmar solvent, you can finish up by spraying out the stencil with the hose. This should remove any excess ink from inside the stencil. Part 6, Reclaiming a Screen. Reclaiming a screen is when you remove the emulsion from the screen. You can find the emulsion remover in the storage unit. First, spray the screen sides and get them both wet. Next, Add a little of the emulsion remover to each side of the screen and agitate it with a sponge or a paper towel. Emulsion remover is a solvent and you should use gloves for this. Gloves can be found in the bottom section of the screen printing storage bin. Once you have agitated both sides of the screen, Spray the screen using the hose. The better setting for the hose is the blast mode. Use hot water and the blast mode to spray out the emulsion. You should start to see the emulsion break down. If the emulsion has been on the screen for quite some time, you may need to repeat the application of the emulsion remover. You need to repeat these steps until the screen is entirely clear. Any emulsion left to dry on the screen will be permanent haze and will not be usable in that spot. Thank you for watching this screen printing tutorial.